everybody. Happy Saturday. It's your girl, Suzette Speaks. Yes, darlings, I am so excited to be with you. It's been a minute, but we're back at it. I want to thank all my fans watching from all over the world. What's up, Toronto? What's up, UK? What's up, Florida? You know we're in the building. Hey, DC, Maryland, all over Texas and beyond. And of course, in Jamaica. Thank you so much for watching. I want to big up Xavier Murphy and the whole Jamaica.com team. It's your hostess with the most is Suzette Speaks, who's always encouraging you to chase the real you. And I'm here today to do it for the ladies. Yes, I'm writing solo. It's all good because you make the conversation. So I wanted to throw a topic out there. Do you think women should still be empowered? Or is there a need for women to still be empowered? For those of you who don't know me, I'm an attorney, I'm a talk show host, and I also host Women's Empowerment Events, where I basically invite groups of women to workshops where I discuss all kinds of, and if you're saying good morning, good morning to you guys. I'm not being rude, good morning, good morning. Um, but yes, I host events where I invite women from all walks of life, professional women, who want to explore the tough topics that many of us have pushed aside and don't spend a lot of time focused on. So what am I talking about? So the topics I've had in my workshops here in South Florida, and I host them from Miami all the way up to Palm Beach. We talk about things that, uh, I don't know, gets a little sticky when people want to hide behind the mask and feel as if they're still perfect or that their life is perfect and all the pictures reflect you know, the best two minutes of their lives every day. Um, I like to say that there are a lot that is troubling uh, women in society, right? We definitely are more out there in terms of our jobs. We have a lot more responsibilities in terms of families and within the community. And there's no one there really cheering us on, right? In the last few years, I think there's been a wonderful movement trying to uh, encourage women to be all that they can be, right? So we know, looking back at the history of where women have come from, right? We've left the stone ages, thank God, where women were basically barefoot and pregnant, and we moved on to more modern times, right? So we have women now in the workplace, since World War II particularly, and thereafter, after we started working, um, because we had to in the factories, etc., we didn't go back home, right? And then I would also like to point out, and there's so many great guys, Netflix shows right now about economic disparity as well as women's roles um, in society. When we looked at like the 70s and the 80s, it became more expensive to raise a family. So it wasn't only out of desire, it was because it started to take two incomes to be able to raise a family. So here we are, let's fast forward, 90s, 2000s, and we have women who are making great career choices. We have women who are generally um, breadwinners as well as kind of co-producers in their household. And they're actually looking for more than just work, right? So many of us have kind of gone inward to say, why am I here? Why am I um, uh, designed the way I am? And who am I here to serve? Which I think are some of the most profound questions one can ask themselves. So when we ask ourselves those questions, sometimes we do need a little help Kind of, kind of parsing the answer. So that's where we come in. Women empowerment events are supposed to help you discover some of those answers. So when I had a workshop uh, called Fear Versus Faith, I know there are a lot of women who have these dreams and have these goals and they're sitting on them, right? Because they're afraid or they're uh, doubtful about their own abilities. So many times, and I think I've read an article and, I, and I'd love to cite it for you, um, where women or young girls by the age of 12 have already stopped believing in themselves. Can you believe that? So I think there may be this perception in society that women tend to be these strong, superhuman, um, emotionally like um, resilient people, but a lot of times we carry a lot of wounds, particularly from childhood, particularly if we were not raised um, in a, an environment with uh, love and encouragement. And even if we were, sometimes there's still some baggage, and we're not going back to blame mom and dad, but sometimes there's some res residual, residual um, baggage that we have to deal with. So here we are trying to empower them. And I saw a post, post guys online, that stated, and it was like a meme, it said, if all these women are empowered and everybody's into empowering women right now, who's empowering all the men for all these empowered women? So I thought to myself, hmm, what does that really mean? And it was posted by a lady, by the way, saying that we're overly empowering women or there's a too much 
uh, going on in terms of the realm of women's empowerment. I thought to myself, really, honey? Really? You as a woman feel like there's uh, way too much empowerment going on for your gender. Now, hold up. Now, hold up. Don't, don't beat me up yet, but I, let me explain. Um, I do believe there's a lot of people out there that are jumping on this bandwagon called empowerment. They are having makeover party, beauty party, um, learn how to do here party, learn how to take care of uh, all kind of thing party, right? Sometimes you, you, you go to an event, right? And you say to yourself, I'm here to learn, to be better, to um, hopefully get some growth. But when you leave the event, because of its lack of substance and intangible, uh, which I say outcomes, you're kind of empty still, and you kind of maybe had a little raw, raw, raw moment, but you leave and you don't really act. You don't have any uh, anything to, to build upon. Real building blocks weren't discussed in terms of how to move past certain things in your life. So I do agree with certain people that believe that some of the events, some of the workshops, some of the conferences, are not all they're cracked up to be. I think there's been a, a trend of over-promising and under-delivery, which can hurt all the, perce the perception of women's empowerment. Now, on the other hand, and I include yours truly on the other hand, there are a lot of events out there and there are a lot of workshops and conferences that stir the soul, right? That wake you up, that prick you. And I'm, I'm talking from experience. I've gone to women's conferences where I didn't get it the day of, but what was poured into me all two years later, the aha hit me. And I thank God that I kept those notes, that I kept that journal, that I kept reflecting on it uh, every couple months and, and look back at what I wrote and why I wrote it. And it's amazing when you're ready, how things kind of come into focus, right? So when I do my thing, I really, really, really try to put women who are attending at the center. Tip number one, right? So a lot of us, in terms of trying to become important or to be seen and to be liked in this social media, like me, like me, like me uh, environment, we tend to want to put on events now. Everybody's a, a, a host. Everybody, everybody puts on things now. We're doing it for the wrong reasons, guys. Attention. And wanting to be accepted and to be noticed. Our regular life is boring. And we're looking for some other way um, to become significant in this world. And it shows in, is ref, and is reflected in the outcome of a lot of what is being produced. Now, if you're a baker, bake. If you're a singer, sing. There's all types of ways to impact women around you, right? My cousin is an audiologist. If, if she gives somebody back their hearing, that is itself also a spiritual gift. He who has hear, ears, let them hear, right? She's not trying to do what the event planner, if you will, um, is, is designed for. So I think sometimes we kind of get a little bit confused and maybe a little bit misguided in our effort in looking to be um, in the space that others are occupied. So let's talk about that, guys. Jamaicans, tell me what you think. Um, there's a lot of, should I say copycats? I don't know if that's the right word. Um, they say that um, emulation is the biggest form of flattery, but some want to just copy people and try to do what they do. Can't, I'm just, is it too real? Is it? I love you guys. I'm saying it with love. I just mean it in a, in a very transparent sense. There's a lot of people, because that woman can sing, you trying to sing, but you ain't never been no singer. There's a lot of people, oh my gosh, I have a conference. I went to this conference to change my life. I'm going to do a conference tomorrow. Did God put it on your heart to do a conference or do you just want to try to bottle what you felt? And it can be done with even good intentions, guys. But I think we got to remember that purpose comes from the Almighty and from within. If you're not tapped into who you are, your love for um, whatever you're designed for, it can be love for people, but those that love can be expressed in so many ways. Instead of you trying to mimic how other people are designed to express the love for humanity and to make and lift a vibration of humanity, you might need to find out who you are. You might need to sit with yourself and, and commune with the Almighty to hear from Him clearly. 
as to what you can do to better the human race. But instead, we're getting kind of like what, what they said, the, 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 it's not the Picasso. It's not the Picasso. It is, it is, it is almost a bad look alike. You know, it's not Mona Lisa, it's Jonah Lisa. And you're looking at Jonah and, and you're wondering why it doesn't look the same. It's because it wasn't designed for it, guys. So if I can encourage you, especially those of you, drop a comment who are doing women's empowerment, who have come to women's empowerment events. I do think there's a real need for it. Women are not empowered through and through. I know it's been a couple years now, but some of y'all nervous as if women have outdone men in society. We still earn less. We're still very scarce in boardrooms. We are still very scarce in leadership, except in Jamaica where your boss is more likely to be a woman. Yes, big up Jamaica, but in a lot of countries across the world, that's not true, right? And then what I realized is that especially very talented, very powerful, um, very outwardly ambitious and successful women, that's who got issues, right? That's who cannot talk to anybody because she is seen as the leader. She is seen as the woman who has it all together for her family, for her friend group. She cannot expose her true self. I aim to create safe spaces for that type of woman, right? So whether it's in um, your workspace, whether it's in your friendship group, whether it's people who are literally um, smiling today and they just feel like they're dying inside, I'm here for you. That's true empowerment. When you can capture and spread your net so wide that the people who are actually in need of a word, let me tell you, people used to go to church for it. Let me just tell you that. Sometimes they don't make it on Saturday or Sunday. They don't make it, right? And there are other people, and I call myself kind of, and I've been called this, um, designed to be an exhorter, to encourage that woman up and give that woman a good word in the time of need, right? I'm not no pastor, let me just tell you that. I'm not preaching right now, but I'm just saying, you don't need a stage to do it. You can do it in your daily walk, anywhere you are. There are women right now in the supermarket, right? The stranger, even in your workplace, the one that get on your nerves. She might be getting on your nerves, not because she doesn't like you or it doesn't really have anything to do with you, right? But what we're dealing with is a society that is told that we don't um, bring ourselves to work as emotional beings, but we spend the majority of our time with the people at work. So here you are putting on your mask, ready to work. And all those um, emotions, all those experiences, all those complicated parts of ourselves don't get left behind just because you walk through the work door, right? And there's no real place to express it. We need those common places. It used to be the church youth group, the women's group, the men's group, the usher group, everywhere was a group, right? But there's been a little bit of a falling away, but the need still exists. So where do people, whether they're religious or not, take refuge? What word do you have for people, right? If you're a woman, and, I, and I'm hopefully talking to somebody out there who knows this type of woman, or even like myself has been this type of woman, you know the reality is that you really don't have um, that safe, non-judgmental sounding board where you can realize you're not the only one in this game. You're not the only one feeling uh, the loneliness in society now. In the social media, everybody sees everybody's life world. I see your kids, I don't even know your kids, but I know your kids because I've been watching them grow up on social media. And I still feel lonely. So I can imagine how that plague is very real for many of you watching. No matter where you are around the world, there's a disconnectedness. The families now, sometimes you get to live in the same community. It's not always that way. We're scattered now. Mommy in one state or one city or one country. Daddy, you're sending money to England. You're coming back home. It is not because uh, there's a lack of love and commitment to the family, but the society today has shifted, right? So the people, um, what I realized too, friends play a huge role in life now. It used to be your nuclear, and then comes your extended, and then the friendship groups. Now, no darling. Friendship groups, particularly when you're in a city where your family does not live, become um, even more important to you. So that's what I hope to create. I hope to create the collision points for people, like-minded people to connect. 
Women seeking a moment of refuge. Women putting down the superwoman cape. It would kill you. It would kill you. If nobody would tell you today, take it off. You don't have to be perfect. You are enough the way you are, right? God created you with every skill set, every piece of um, DNA you needed to fulfill your God-given purpose. But we're never told that. I was listening to a podcast. I don't know if it was T.D. Jakes, and he was talking about how every single thing in your life is telling you not to be authentic. Everything is telling you to, to conform or to look like and be like or emulate or buy things that will justify who you are in your existence. That's not the way life works. But unfortunately, we don't get enough reminders of that. So I'm asking you, do you think women still need to be empowered? Do you think there's way too many empowerment events going on right now? Do you think the level of those events are meeting expectation? Are you a woman who empowers other women and how? Let me know. Like I said, it can be, it's so funny. Sometimes people think they need a stage to do something and just one simple conversation with your significant other, with your loved ones, with a student, with someone that you know in your life can help shift that person and refocus that person. So no matter what you're doing, and, and like I said, it may come uh, through hobby, it may come through you planning something big, it may come through simple intimate conversation on vacation with somebody strange. You don't know how you're going to serve, but all of them are significant. I think sometimes people want to apply this big definition of purpose. My purpose can only be if I have a million YouTube followers. No. How about your purpose is a lady that cleans your house? How about your purpose is a woman that you ride the bus with every day? How about your purpose is that, that child that's living with you, that you're in charge of caring for and loving? So I think all those things happen when women are actually their true, authentic, fully expressed selves. Until we can get to the point where we know the majority of women are well-adjusted in that way, we can't stop empowering women. We just got started yesterday. It's not been this very uh, lengthy movement, right? Me Too is just two years old, all right? So everybody who's nervous, oh my God, the women are taking over. Oh my gosh, the women, the women. Oh, oh no, oh no. We were just started speaking about abuse that was hidden for years. Those people are still working in their industries. Those people are still in, in charge of, of people's livelihoods. So once we start talking empowerment, guys, I get a little, I get a little uh, passionate <laughs> because I know the, the need exists. It absolutely exists. There's not enough women who know through and through they're capable and they can and should express their gifts and talents in the way they vision, in their dreams. You're having those dreams for a reason. Stop making people tell you you cannot. Stop believing the negative. Work on your inner self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? You wouldn't talk to other people how you talk to yourself. There are so many of us poisoning ourselves because of what we heard mommy say, because of what we heard daddy say, right? The examples that we, we're not perfect, but we have to unlearn right, and push through. So there needs to be a continued movement that teaches women about self-love, positive self-image, working together, right? Not bad mind towards one another and jealous. You're jealous? Don't tell the truth. Have you ever dealt with a jealous woman? It's, it's terrible. Jealousy and envy is some of the worst things to be. No, man, I, I, I've experienced it and I'm like, you can't be me. Stop. You love yourself. Thank God for you. God made you and you're the only one like you. Your DNA is not my DNA. So find what he wants you to do and who he call you to serve. And stop running me down. And stop looking for uh, 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 things to say because guess what happened? When people cannot get um, to you, they try to change what others perceive you to be. That's when you get into the gossip, hello. That's when you get into the people who are literally unhappy with themselves, tearing down others. Don't be that person. Don't be, don't be Jenny, don't be Jenny, right? Be gentle, be loving. Encourage your sister when she's walking in her purpose. And even if it's not your season, your season will come. Hold fast. If God made a promise to you and you say you believe him, why are you worried about, oh my gosh, her season already come. Where's mine? I don't know if I'm going to get mine. You will. 
Stop looking for other people's things. Know that he loves you just as much. God is not a respecter of person, right? When he's ready and when you're ready, someone want to know ready. You think you're ready. If he gave you blessing, if he gave you vision, it will blow your mind. You got to work on you in the meantime. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people, men and women, suffering from low self-esteem quietly. They don't wake up every morning loving themselves. They look in the mirror and they can't stand what they see. Until that ends, we're going to need empowerment. We're going to need reminders. We used to do that in school. Teacher used to say, you, you love yourself. You take care of yourself. You clean. You, you, wear, you wear your uniform. You brush your hair. You brush your teeth. You look good. You, you used to instill that in kids. Kids are not necessarily. Now they say in American kids are overconfident. But uh, for the most part, by the time we reach adulthood, we need a pat on the back. There's nobody encouraging us. So in until I see people, particularly where I am in South Florida, kind of uh, reshaped from the inside out, because the work cannot be external. You cannot be a mean girl in real life and talk about you want to empower other people. That's the, the, the internal work has to happen first. The love of self, when they say love your neighbor as yourself, you can't love your neighbor because you don't love you. The work of, of loving and, and really being okay with you, right? Keeping a peace within yourself, knowing that the, the Almighty already has your path laid out. He has not forgotten you. And if your path is different and doesn't have so-called this type of abundance that you want, it's still worthy to be, to be praised for, honestly. Because I'm, I'm literally 100 miles from Bahamas right now. There's people that, that would die for clean water right now. So all that we have, sometimes we minimize all of our gifts. Sometimes we, we disparage and we, we think they're nothing because we're not as tall, short, pretty, fat, skinny, um, have enough money. But right where you are, you could be serving people. Right where you are, you could be empowering somebody. So drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about this whole empowerment movement. Is it overkill? Do people need to come off of it? No, too much, too much. Or do you think there's room um, and a need for women to be empowered? I'm so glad you guys have been watching. I hope you check me out on YouTube. Again, check out the Speak Women's Empowerment Workshops. We have a couple coming up in September on the 28th. We're going to be talking about the confidence code. Where is your confidence? Really? Real confidence right and then october 19th we're going to be talking about are you getting in your own way self-sabotage some of us really have issues that <laughs> and we hide them very well but i want to i want to dig up some of that so we can cover it back properly right on a solid foundation so feel free to reach out to me uh like my page suzette speaks and i want to big up all of you for commenting i'm gonna go back after and answer and respond to everything all right please like Please share, love or no, and I'll see you next time.